Hello, today I'm going to walk you through the exact setup that we have on our boat from a transducer, sounder module, and chart plotter setup. In addition to going over what we have on our boat, I'm also going to cover all of the new items that have come out from Garmin Marine Electronics that have replaced what we have on the boat, just in case you're doing a new install and you're not sure what to buy. Now this video is a request from one of our viewers and really it's, what a great idea um, when he asked me for this because when we were building our boat I spent months trying to research and figure out exactly what I wanted to go with on our boat. Now if you're going through this process it's super stressful because it is a very expensive decision trying to outfit your boat with what you want and what you want to get out of the electronics and at the end of the day once you buy everything you're stuck with what you bought. The last thing you wanna do is spend all this money and buy all these electronics for your boat, and when you get them installed and you get out to your fishing spots, you're unhappy with the result of what you purchased because now you're, you own it. So the idea behind this video is to really go into detail on everything that we have on our boat and obviously the new replacements that have come out from Garmin to try to eliminate that frustration and stress for you if you wanna retrofit your boat or if you're installing new electronics on your boat, really take all that frustration out and hopefully this is your one-stop shop and give you a good idea from a Garmin perspective on what to put on your boat. I'm also gonna cover for you all of the compatible items with the units that I have because if you, if you already have the Garmin uh, chart plotters installed on your boat, that way you don't have to go out and buy new ones. You can actually add a lot of this stuff to your existing chart plotters. They're very compatible. I'm gonna show you all of the units that are compatible with it, with, with what we have on our boat from a transducer and sounder module to really ease that for you and, and give you an idea of what's compatible with what you have. So having said that, let's go ahead and jump right in. We're gonna start from a transducer and work our way all the way up to the chart plotter. So our boat has an R111 in hole 2K high and low chirp transducer. So if you're unfamiliar with chirp technology, chirp technology, what it does is it sends a range of frequencies at once, and this gives you an even better image with higher resolution on your screen. This transducer has the capability of transmitting in low or high frequency. Now, when we had the boat built, we went with this choice of having an in-hole transducer because we didn't really want to cut large holes in the bottom of the boat. So this transducer is mounted inside the boat and it shoots through the hole to get the reading. Now, the only call out for this transducer is that you have to have a solid fiberglass hole for this to work properly. The housing is made of polyurethane so you could cut it and mount it at the angle of your boat. The tank then is connected with epoxy and fiberglass in to ensure secure fit. Now the one drawback of this transducer, so positive you don't cut a large hole in the bottom of your boat, but the drawback is that this transducer can read depth only. So meaning it cannot give you the water temperature because it doesn't physically touch the water. Now don't worry, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get to this in a little bit and show you how we remedied this for our boat because as a charter captain and commercial fisherman, water temperature is very important to us. So we need to be able to identify the uh, water temperature. Now the transducer has 2K uh, watts of transmitting power. So this is excellent for deep water fishing. The low chirp frequency range on this unit goes from 38 to 75 kilohertz. And in low chirp, it has a maximum depth range of 6,000 feet. Now in high chirp, the transducer has a frequency range of 130 to 210 kilohertz. And in high chirp, it has a maximum depth range of 1,500 feet. So if you're fishing like we are sword fishing and we go beyond 1,500 feet, all you have to do is just switch your frequency to low chirp. And then now your max depth goes all the way to 6,000. Feet. The cable length on the transducer to the connection that goes to your sound module is 49 feet. So you have plenty of cable to run it all the way to your sounder module inside of your console. And then lastly, just to give you an idea of how large this unit is, it has a weight of 43.4 pounds. It's a large, large transducer. So if you're thinking about putting it in, you need to have enough space to fit it. And then obviously if you're getting a new build, I would go ahead and get the information, the communication to your manufacturer very early in the process so they can move things around and leave space for that transducer in your build area where you've got your pumps. Now from the transducer, that cable connects all the way to a sounder module. 
So we've got the GSD-26 sounder module on our boat, and the sounder module is really what makes it possible for the image to be seen on the transducer. You can't, it doesn't just plug right into the back. It's such a big, powerful unit and needs the sounder module. The GSD has, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the, the framing of it. It's a fully gasketed aluminum and steel housing, and then it's got a plastic access panel. Now this unit is also a very large unit. Right, so the dimensions of this are 10.8 inches by 14.7 inches by 3.9 inches, and it has a total weight of 11.37 pounds. Now the unit is highly rated uh, with a waterproof rating, but I would highly recommend mounting this in the console in a dry place. You don't wanna spend all that money and put that waterproof rating to the test. Now the next item on the list from a specification, which is really important if, uh, if you have a center console bolt like I do, is the compass safe distance. So the compass safe distance is 23.6 inches. And this is important because when you're mounting it, you obviously, if you mount it too close to your compass, it's gonna throw your compass off. So this has a rating. It could be as long as it's 23.6 inches, that is a safe distance from your compass. Now the unit has a maximum depth range of 10,000 feet and a frequency compatibility of 25 to 250 kilohertz. Now this is gonna be dependent on the transducer that you choose because it's obviously not gonna read more than what the transducer uh, is reading, but that's the range of what it can handle. So if you purchase a transducer that could go from 25 on a low end to a high end of 250 kilohertz, the GSD-26 sounder module will be able to read it. And then lastly, the GSD-26 is compatible for all the way up to a 3K transducer. Now, if you're thinking of retrofitting your boat with this, I'm gonna go through all of the units that are compatible with the GSD-26. So I'm gonna go through each of the pages uh, of the units. Uh, you could just pause, I'm not gonna read them, there's a bunch. I mean, from looking at this, it's, I feel like it's almost everything that Garmin has made is compatible. But obviously I'm not the Garmin expert, so I, I included it in here and I'll pause it so you guys could take a screenshot or a picture of it and you could find, you know, see if your unit is on there. So these are all the items uh, from a compatibility standpoint on the first page. Then we'll go to the second page, then the third page, and lastly, the fourth page. So a bunch, a bunch of units from Garmin that are compatible with the GSD-26. Now, from the GSD sounder module, the connection then goes to your chart plotter, and this connects via an ethernet cable. So that cable is gonna go all the way to the back of your chart plotter and will let you be able to see the image on your screen. Now, if you run multiple units, the only thing you have to do is run a jumper ethernet cable from the second port over to the other port of the other unit. Now, this is gonna allow you to be able to see and control it on both of the screens. Similar to the same way that NEMA 2000 allows you to control everything in your entire system and network from either of the screens. Now on our boat, we run dual Garmin 7612 units, and these units have a dimensions of 13 inches wide, 8.9 inches tall, and 3.1 inches deep. They have a total weight of six pounds and they're also uh, highly rated waterproof. Now the display size is 10.3 inches wide, 6.4 inches tall, and then diagonally the display is 12.1 inches. The display resolution on these uh, 7612s is 1280 by 800 pixels and the unit is a touchscreen so we, we love the touchscreen. Uh, feature, we feel like it makes it even easier to use. We're so accustomed nowadays to our phones and everything, our tablets, everything being touchscreen. I think you're gonna find a lot of ease in using the touchscreen units as well. Now these units come with two full SD card slots in each one of them. And if you connect your, you know, to your system with NEMA 2000, you'll be able to see and control everything no matter what screen your cards are plugged in. So you've got two cards on one unit, two cards on the other, and then NEMA 2000 will let you see everything across both units. The units have a maximum capacity of 5,000 uh, waypoints that you could save on them, 50 saved tracks, and a maximum of 100 saved navigation routes. Now at the beginning of the video, we spoke about how the R111, the in-hole transducer, it can't read water temperature because it doesn't really physically touch the water. It's shooting through uh, inside of that tank through your hole. 
So, and I explained that we're gonna cover how we remedy this. So on our boat, we installed the Garmin GT 23M transom mount transducer. Now this is a very affordable solution to ensure that you can read water temperature and it also gives you the clear view feature on your units. Now this transducer power with chirp, uh, traditional chirp is 600 watts and then with clear view is 500 watts. The transducer frequency capacity with chirp midband is 80 to 160 kilohertz and then with clear view it's 245 to 275 kilohertz and 455 to 475 kilohertz. Now this transducer has a maximum depth in the traditional mode of 1800 feet and in the clear view mode is a thousand feet. And lastly, the transducer has a cable length of 30 feet and then obviously because it's physically in the water mounted on your transom, it can read the water temperature and the depth. Now, this is exactly what we have installed on our boat today. But as you can imagine with technology, every day technology keeps improving and new things keep coming out, which replace the previous models. Now, at the time of me recording this video, Garmin's already come out with new items that replace the items that we have on our boat that are even better technology. So I wanna cover these items just in case you're either wanting to buy everything new for your boat or you're getting a new boat built, knowing what I have installed on the boat is great. If you don't want to spend the money to buy everything again, you know what you can retrofit with it. But if you're buying everything new, you obviously want to get the new technology that's going to give you an even better image and resolution on your screen. So, you know, we're, we're not sponsored by Garmin. We're doing this video to help our, our viewers to kind of understand. We've put out a lot of Garmin videos, but if somebody from Garmin is watching and they want to give us some new uh, chart plotters and new equipment that we could do future videos, we will gladly accept it. But if I was going to pay out of pocket today and I was going to redo the entire setup on our boat, this is what we would go with. This is the new items that have replaced the items that I have on the boat. The first thing, and we're gonna start again from the transducer and work our way up to the chart plotter, but the first thing that I would change uh, is the transducer. We have the R111, which is a 2K high and low chirp transducer. And this is not new technology. Uh, the R599 3K high and low chirp transducer, right? So this actually existed when I installed uh, the transducer on my boat and we had our boat built. Uh, but to try to save a little bit of money, I went with the 2KW and I regret not having that extra thousand kilowatts of power in the transducer. So if I was doing it all over again, I would install the R599 to 3K transducer on the boat. So this transducer also reads through the hull of the boat it also comes with a polyurethane tank that you could cut the epoxy and you know fiberglass it, uh, epoxy and fiberglass it into your boat. But this transducer has 3KW transducer transmitting power, which I believe right now at the time of this video for civilian non-military vessels is the maximum that you can have at this time. I haven't seen anything with more transmit power on Airmar's uh, site than this. Airmar is the company that actually makes the uh, transducer for everybody. So I would go with the R599, the 3K transducer. This unit has a low chirp frequency range of 28 to 60 kilohertz. And in low chirp, the maximum depth goes up to 10,000 feet. So that extra thousand watts gives you 4,000 feet more of, this, of uh, depth. And in the high chirp, the frequency range is from 130 to 210 kilohertz. And the same as the, uh, the 2KW, the maximum depth in high chirp is 1,500 feet. The cable length is 49 feet. And then from a weight perspective, it's also 43.4 pounds. Now that uh, cable goes all the way up and would have to plug into a sounder module. So the new upgrade to the GSD-26 is the GSD-28 sounder module. So the GSD-28 also has a fully gasketed aluminum and steel housing with a plastic access panel. The dimensions are gonna be very similar. The uh, GSD-28 is 10.7 inches by 14.4 inches by four inches of height. 
and then it has a total weight of 14.13 pounds. This unit, same as the GSC 26, it's also a highly waterproof rated and also has a compass safe distance of 23.6 inches. The maximum depth rating for the GSC 28 is 10,000 feet. The frequency compatibility on the GSC 28 uh, goes from a low uh, kilohertz of 25 to a maximum of 250 kilohertz. And the same as the GSC 26, you know, this range, uh, this is obviously going to be dependent on the transducer that you plug into it. That's just a, think of it like a cap, like a low and a max of what it can actually read. So as long as your transducer falls between that range, the GSD 28 sounder module will be able to read it. And then lastly, the GSD 28 is compatible for up to a 3KW transducer. Now I know you might be thinking this sounds almost exactly the same as the GSD 26. And while these are very similar, the GSD 28 has a two to six times faster ping rate than the GSD 26. So this is a huge improvement in the quality and speed of the image that is displayed on your screen. If you think about that, two to six times faster ping rate than the GSD 26, it, uh, unbelievable. Now from there, I would upgrade the screens to the new Garmin uh, 8612 units. These units are almost the same size. They have a dimension of 11.9 inches wide, eight and a half inches tall, and three inches in depth. The 8612s have a weight of six pounds and they also come with a very high waterproof rating. The display size is 10.1 inches wide by 5.7 inches tall, and then diagonally they're 11.6 inches. Now, the display resolution is where these excel compared to the 7612s. The 8612s have a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Huge increase with the um, ping rate from the GSD 28 and then a huge increase in the resolution uh, from the 8612s versus the 7612s. I, I can only imagine th this has got to give you an incredible image display on your screens with great, great resolution. So these, uh, the 8612s, they're also a uh, touchscreen, you know, which like we mentioned on the 7612s, is going to give you a really good, uh, easy user experience. And then from a SD card slots, the 7612s have, their slots are for full SD cards, but the 8612s are now micro SD cards. Now from a maximum waypoint uh, that you could save, they're the same at 5,000. Uh, the same with 50 maximum safe tracks and 100 maximum safe navigation routes. Now, this is exactly what we would use if we were going to reinstall everything on our boat right now. Or if someone from Garmin reached out to me and said, hey, we want to give you this and we want you to do some videos on it, we will gladly accept it. Uh, but that's what we would install right now on our boat, exactly the same what we have from an upgrade perspective from the new Garmin Marine Electronics. Now, the only thing that we didn't talk about there that I would also add, uh, like we spoke about, to be able to read water temperature would be the same Garmin uh, transom mount transducer just so that we could get water temperature on our screens. Now, I know that setting up and purchasing electronics for your boat can be a very stressful uh, process because it's very expensive. And whatever you end up buying and going with, you know, you own it. Uh, you're, you're stuck with it. So hopefully this video is going to take some of that stress out, give you an idea of what we have on the boat. You know, a lot of viewers have seen the videos, see the things that we're marking when we're sword fishing and we're marking squid in 1500 feet of water. We can identify the squid on the ocean floor. And that's what we use to target, you know, where we're going to fish for, for swordfish. But hopefully this takes some of that stress out, gives you an idea of what's compatible with what you have on your boat if you want to retrofit and add some of this stuff to it or it gives you an idea if you want to be able to see the same things that we're seeing from a new setup perspective. If you want to check out more helpful Garmin tips, check out this playlist.